Hi, everybody. Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. We've been talking about the end of luxury, and uh, it seems that the brands, the luxury brands, are aware of this as well. And so they're trying to find a way to lure customers back in, especially the aspirational customers, uh, back into the shops. Now, I think this is just part of the process of the end of luxury. So bear with me. I'm going to explain to you what are they, what their plan is, according to you know my analysis, and how it's going to turn out for them, depending on how we react. But first, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Let's get to 100,000 subbies. We are so close. I can smell it. Come on, Linda. Let's subscribe and thumb up this video. Mm. I am filming this video live, by the way. I live stream several times a week, so come join the fun, come join the chat. Hello to my co-chatters. So I've been reading several articles, and they're all claiming that the new strategy that the luxury brands are implementing is not to reduce prices, even though we have seen some price reductions in the not-so-distant past. You know, we've seen Prada reduce some of their classic prices, like, overnight, not as a sale, but permanently reducing prices, you know. And then some brands like Chanel, don't want to reduce their prices. They keep going up. They don't care, you know, if sales aren't the best. I mean, they're a privately owned company. They don't have to answer to shareholders. So, you know, bags that they used to charge us three, dollars $4,000 for now cost $10,000 plus, and they're going to keep going up in price, and they don't really care. So those classic bags are going to have that really high price tag. But what are the luxury brands going to do? to try to make us come to the shops and buy with the illusion of having purchased a classic bag for less. Well, the trick, thumb up the video, is that they are reducing the sizes of the bags. Now we've seen this happen in the past, but they're building up this trend. It is kind of uh, the trend forecast companies are talking about this as well. And this is a trend coming up in the near future. Yes, there are the boho bags, the bigger bags, but because that is kind of their actual trend, people are looking into bigger bags at the moment, but the brands don't care. They don't want to reduce the prices of their bigger classic bags. Instead, they want to introduce smaller bags that cost less because they're so small. So the nano bag is still here and it's here to stay, you guys. I have a couple of examples of small bags that I purchased throughout the years. I am one of those suckers that bought them, not because they were cheaper, but because I really liked them. But let me show you a couple of examples of teeny tiny bags. Let's begin with Vivian Westwood, love of my life. I got the Linda. Can you believe this bag is called the Linda bag? Yeah, listen, Linda. This is the Linda Mini, the Mini Linda. They're also, they're also made as big bags, but I got the Mini Linda in leather, embossed in croc. This is not real croc. This is just embossed in croc. It's calfskin. Smells really nice. Um, so I got a little magnetic closure there. You can take this little giblet off, okay? You can take the strap off and you can use it just as a little tiny clutch. Isn't it adorable? They've also made mini Lindas in uh, non-embossed leather and other textiles as well. So we got the mini Linda and I got this one on sale for a steal. I got this for $200, I think, or $175 uh, after it was reduced drastically from like 400. So we got the mini Linda, which I wear to special occasions just like that, you know. Then, of course, when I went to Melbourne for the premiere of Art Lovers Unite, my movie with uh, Vivian Westwood, that was the mini Linda, and Patrick J. Thomas. So what happened was um, in Melbourne back in 2022, I made one luxury purchase, and that was Tallulah. Tallulah, my munchkin micro speedy okay we'll go we'll go uh yeah this one holds like i always say even in the unboxing and in the review of this bag i said it only holds bro broken shattered dreams and nothing more okay that's what this bag holds it comes with a pre-patinaed leather so it does hold a sock debbie you can put one sock in there i think i do have a sock in here to keep the shape a not used sock a brand new one yeah, I do. I do have a little yellow McDonald's sock in there. Yes, I have a McDonald's sock, believe it or not. <laughs> ah, the poverty. There you go. Um, so we got a sock in there to keep its shape. And uh, Tallulah is very tiny. 
I, I named it Tallulah. What can I say? I mean, made in Italy. Okay. So there's this one. I think it was, this was crazy expensive. It cost more than the regular size Speedy used to cost like five, six years ago. So this is kind of like the price of a Speedy, the regular size Speedy from before the pandemic. So whatever, never again, we've done it. And well, don't say never again if they bring out the Takashi Murakami version of this little munchkin with cherries on it and little. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I'll be able to hold myself back. I don't know. Then I got at, at one of the outlets. I got at the Gucci outlet this little mini bag. So I like I Okay, well, this is the green screen of it all. It is yellow, but it reflects green. There you go. Uh, with the horse bit. So you can take this strap off and you can use it as a wallet, which technically it is because in the back, it is a wallet. It's the Adidas with Gucci collaboration that went on sale in the outlet. And there's a zipper pull here as well. Card slots, card slots, card slots, card slots. You know what I'm saying? Um, so we got this little munchkin here for 300 bucks, I think. I can't remember. But anyway, it went down from like 900 to 300 And my piece de resistance, I got this one back in 2018. 2018, the love of my life, the Micro 255 from Chanel. This is technically a belt bag, like a bum bag, but I wear it either as a necklace around my neck um, or on my shoulder, just like that, because <laughs> hello, like what will go, will go. This is how we, this is how we do, does it. You know, this is my little uh, Munchkin 255. It does have a turn lock, not a clip lock. It literally, see, turn lock, look at that. There you go. We open it up. I got my little protective felt paper here. It's made in France, baby. Ah, do you remember the days when I did the unboxing of this one? Oh, still smells divine. Those were the days I would never purchase this again today. But having it in my collection is special. Yeah, it has a little slit in the back. You can also really like, hi, like a Barbie. Hi, I have my bag. Hello. You know, I'm holding my bag like a Barbie would. Uh, so <laughs> de-stressed calfskin, gold hardware. This is ruthenium, but gold toned. A little bit of that 255 chain and a little bit of the leather. Um, so yeah, and now, this is what I think they deem to be, for luxury standards, uh, a um, miniature bag that they're thinking, oh, let's make this and let's make them buy it. Let's make the customers buy it. Let me tell you something. So to be perfectly honest with you, now that I'm thinking back, this was a crazy price. This tiny little thing was $2,500 uh, or euro maybe Euro. Um, back then I thought, oh yeah, we'll do it. Now I'm thinking, what the hell was I thinking? But also, but also now I'm thinking, well, so for Chanel standards, this little bag today would be $4,000 or $3,700. Is that's what, that's what they would charge you for this. That would be their like, Look, this is the entry level price tag for one of our miniature version of our bags because this one in the original size is $10,000 and up. So they're probably they're thinking, well, if that one's $10,000, we can charge you like three, seven or $4,000 for this one. So that's the miniature version. So the $4,000 price tag is a steal. That's what they want you to think. But honestly though, I don't think that works anymore. I don't think that works anymore because it's the end of luxury. I mean, how how tinier can these bags get for them to not cost three thousand dollars? Like, what are we are, are we talking about something this tiny, like a joke? And then you charge a thousand dollars for it, and then you say like, look, it's just a thousand dollars. Of course, it's not just a thousand dollars, but to to them for their standards, it is right. Like. How far, this is what I'm asking, 
Because we've already had the miniature bag trend. We've already had it. But now if they're bringing it back just for the sake of luring back aspirational customers into the stores, okay, but how small are these bags going to get? Like, are we talking this tiny, like this little jack-o'-lantern bag? Like, are we talking like, is this what we're going to do? Is this what we're going to do in order to like say, okay, for this size, I'm going to charge you $900. So it's under $1,000. So for Chanel standards, we consider that to be a great entry level aspirational price tag. I'm like, yeah, but what am I supposed to do with it? Like, what can I put in it? This bag is borderline. Like here, the, the, your smartphone fits, your wallet fits, a little perfume bottle fits. Like this is that, you know what I mean? This is that size. By the way, it's lined in leather, okay? Uh, not uh, cotton or gros grand, whatever. It's that borderline limit. This is all th like smaller than this. What are you going to do? It's like, what are you going to put in it? You can't even you can't even fit a credit card when they get this tiny inside of them. So, you know, I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, brands, how far are we gonna push it? Luxury sucks, you guys. We've come to the point where luxury really sucks. And speaking of, check out my luxury sucks merch. Let a hoe plug myself in. Get it at superdacob.com, www.superdacob.com. There's a whole collection. Here it is. This is the luxury sucks print. I have three different prints. The sirens warning you for a price increase. Then we got the luxury sucks because it sucks our wallets dry, but also because currently luxury sucks, in my humble opinion, allegedly. So you can get your merch at www.superdacob.com or on Amazon if you search for the keyword Super Dacob Halloween. However, not every Amazon has it. Not every world, uh, not every country has. Oh, God. The merch is not available on every. Amazon country and every country of every oh for crying out loud. So in some countries on Amazon, my merch is not available. While in other countries on Amazon, my merch is available. There you go. Thank you, Luxury Sucks merch representation. Little plug over. So there you go. What do you guys think? I personally feel like we are at a point in time where there's no salvaging this, you guys. Like what we got, we got. We got our baglets. We had our fun. I think for the new generation, the young kids today that are just discovering luxury and they're like, oh my God, we'll go, we'll go. I'm like, girl, I'm so sorry that you have to go through this now that you're just discovering like luxury now because it's going to be a struggle for whoever is like growing into it now, who's at an age starting to earn their own money, being able to afford their own stuff. Back in the day, you're like, okay, you know, I'm starting to do to work my own job, have my own money. Okay, the Chanel bag I want is three thousand dollars. Ooh, I'm gonna have to save up and then buy it. Okay, now with the same salary from before, because the salaries have not gone up, bitch. <laughs> the salaries are the same they used to be ten years ago, but the bag that was three thousand dollars is now ten thousand dollars. So whoever is starting to work today is gonna be like, um. So I got to save up $10,000 for the bag that used to cost $3,000 just like five years ago, but the salaries are not going up. How? How? Ask yourself how. Not worth it, says Charles, period. There you go. Lidovina says, exactly. The younger folk that are going into luxury now have arrived too late to the party. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts and prayers down below. Subscribe, thumb up the video, and never give up on love. Bye.